Hello and welcome to the first in what we're hoping will become a monthly vlog um, covering all the latest news and information on dentistry. Uh, what we're hoping is this will be an easy way for you to keep up to date with all the latest dental news, um, the latest dental politics, hear from leaders in the profession and it's an opportunity to discuss all the uh, latest gossip uh, surrounding dentistry. So. First up um, is a topic that I'm sure is on everybody's lips and you've probably heard enough about, um, Brexit. Um, no matter how bored you are with hearing about it, um, it's been pretty difficult to escape recently. But there was one news story that hit all the headlines for um, its positive spin and uh, that was uh, from Christian Co. They launched their latest business outlook for 2019, um, which is an annual review of the previous year and looks at what 2019 might bring uh, for businesses across the sector that Christie & Co works in. So the review this year reported a strong 5% increase in practice dental practice prices in 2018. And they also predicted a strong. Uh, they predicted strong growth for dental practice sales in 2019 too. That's despite Brexit. So we spoke to Simon Hughes, managing director medical at Christie, um, to ask why dental practice sales are so resilient to Brexit fluctuations. Um, so in terms of why uh, the dental market doesn't appear to be influenced too much by Brexit. Um, NHS dentistry in particular is needs driven, so if a patient has a problem with their teeth then they'll need a dentist whether uh, we're coming out of the EU or not. Um, I suppose private dentistry, uh, whilst it's needs driven to a degree, is a little bit more discretionary spend, um, so any downturn in the economy typically has more of an effect on the private dental sector than it does on the NHS sector. Overall though, um, banks are very keen to lend into dentistry. Uh, it's a very low risk sector, relatively speaking, because it is needs driven compared to other business sectors that are more uh, based on discretionary spending. Uh, so we think that's one of the reasons why uh, the market still seems to be um, moving along very well. Okay, and what impact do you think Brexit will have on dentistry? So in terms of what impact Brexit could have on uh, the business of dentistry, uh, I think one of the biggest challenges over the last couple of years has been the uh, recruitment and retention of associates. And we're seeing practices in more rural locations particularly challenged by that. I suppose if fewer dentists come to the UK from the EEA, uh, then that could have an impact on the ability of uh, practices to perform their UDA targets and that clearly will have a direct uh, financial negative impact at practice level. Um, on the other hand, in the more urban locations, uh, where generally there's a greater supply of dentists, uh, we wouldn't expect that to be such a, a significant impact. And what changes would you like to see in 2019 in dentistry? So in terms of uh, what would be a positive change for 2019, um, I think there's been a lot of uh, press and comments in the industry over the last couple of years about the morale, uh, particularly in NHS dentistry. Um, a better funding settlement would enable uh, the industry to retain more NHS dentists and see less of a migration into the private sector. Um, and that could reduce or would reduce uh, waiting lists, which has obviously been um, one of the key issues reported in the, in the national press. Simon, thank you for your time. Not at all, thank you. So, yesterday uh, I had the opportunity to attend the very first GDC annual conference. Um, this is an opportunity for the dental regulator to talk about what it's been up to over the past year and its plans uh, for the next year. So um, the GDC is doing everything it can to change the perception the, um, the profession currently has of it. Uh, and conferences like yesterday certainly do go some way to helping to answer some of its critics. Um, 
At the conference, the GDC mentioned how the number of concerns being brought to its doors has dropped from a high of about 3,000 in 2014 down to about 1,600 uh, in the last year. And the number of incoming fitness to practice cases has also dropped to its lowest point since 2013, which is following a continued downtrend. So a number of people who were there raised the obvious annual retention fee question, asking when it's going to drop. And Ian Brack had a well-prepared answer uh, as to why it will be remaining high in the short term. The, the GDC is doing all the right things uh, and saying the right things as well to change perceptions. That's everything apart from actually listening to the profession. Uh, there are lots of great opinions raised at the conference, the conferences, sorry, lots of great opinions raised at the conference, voices from people all over the profession, and even lay people, members of the public, were there to talk to the GDC and give their views on dentistry. But I came away from the day feeling like the GDC um, wouldn't action any of the points raised um, and would just go back to doing what it's been doing over the past year. I'd love to be proven wrong, um, and if the GDC does release a press release um, today or in the next couple of days, then I will eat my words and we dentistry.co.uk will be the first uh, website to, to publish um, that story. But I don't think it's going to change its direction. I don't think it's going to come away with any action points because of yesterday, because of the points raised from yesterday. And really, I think the conference yesterday was just an opportunity for the GDC to pat itself on the back for the year it's had and, um, and to just say how well it's been doing. But either way, I'll keep my eyes and ears peeled and we'll make sure everybody's kept up to date. Finally, I just wanted to quickly mention some of the major conferences and exhibitions FMC will be running over the next year. We've launched a completely new calendar, which uh, already started with the Implant Dentistry Show uh, last week and Enhanced CPD Dentistry, which will be tomorrow. Um, we have geographically focused exhibitions such as the London Dentistry Show, Dublin Dentistry Show, Edinburgh Dentistry Show and Cardiff Dentistry Show. Um, and they will be coming up throughout the year. Um, so make sure you visit fmc.co.uk and dentistry.co.uk to find out more information and uh, to make sure you put the dates in the diary. In the meantime, thank you for watching. I uh, appreciate you taking the time and um, tune in next month for all the latest news and information from then. Thanks very much.